Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Patrick, and today I wanted to show you why I think you should do code first um, instead of schema first when creating your next GraphQL API. And we'll see some of my favorite benefits of code first, and also we will see how we can still use GraphQL schema tooling like GraphQL code gen and Apollo Federation using these code first libraries. So if you were here yesterday, you've probably seen Mark andre uh, making the case for you know, developing GraphQL API using code. And when I was watching this, this talk, I said, oh, maybe there's no point in me doing this talk, right? He already made the case for it. But you know, I think it's still worth doing, um, talking about why I think code first um, is better and also showing actual implementation of code first using Python in this case. So to set the stage for this, like, GraphQL has been around for about eight years now. And over those eight years, we've seen a lot of libraries um, and also a lot of different uh, languages being able to create GraphQL APIs. In fact, today we're going to see Python instead of probably the common language here, which is JavaScript. But even if you had so many libraries, uh, we can pretty much categorize them into approaches, which is schema first and code first. And in schema first, you pretty much write your schema before writing the resolvers. For example, here we have very basic schema, just one type and one field which returns a string. And, and then we use libraries to load the schema and attach resolver to the field of our types. Uh, pretty straightforward. And here we have Python on the left uh, using Ariadne and JavaScript on the right using uh, Apollo Server. And we pretty much saying, oh, I have the query, I have the a low field, I want to attach the, this function that returns a low word. And that's pretty much how schema um, first works. And one of the benefits of schema first is that basically forces you to think about the design of your schema. And that's a really good thing. And it arguably is also a thing that you should still doing even if you're doing code first. So let's take a look at code first. So in code first, you pretty much write both the schema and the resolver all at the same time using uh, code. And in this case, we also have Python and JavaScript. Um, and you know, we are using a kind of schema building pattern. So we're using classes to instantiate the schema and also the object type and the fields and also passing the resolvers to the fields. And if you're like me, you probably don't really like this code. This code feels quite verbose to me and potentially not type safe, at least in Python. I know there is some implementation of this pattern in, in TypeScript that make it type safe, but for, in Python you cannot, you cannot do that, unfortunately. So I think we can do much better. And today I wanted to show you a slightly different approach uh, of code first. Uh, but it takes advantage of the fact that we're using a programming language to write the schema. But before that, doing that, let me actually introduce myself. So uh, my name is Patrick, as I said at the beginning. I'm also a developer advocate at Apollo GraphQL. And on top of that, I also organize Python Italy and EuroPython. Those are two conferences about Python. And you can see that I really love Python. <laughs> and, oh, thank you. And I also really love GraphQL. In fact, I kind of combined these two passions uh, with Mr. Berry, which is a GraphQL library that uses Python typings to create um, uh, GraphQL APIs. And we're going to see what that means in just a few slides. So as I mentioned, Survey takes a different approach. It's still code first, but leverages the features of the, uh, the language of Python to allow you to gra write GraphQL APIs with just uh, minimal syntax. And I think this is probably what also Mark meant. Like, you know, when you're doing code first, you're actually using a programming language to create your schema. So it's not about um, you know, actually replicating uh, um, the schema using uh, code. Um, and Survey basically uses uh, Python classes to define the GraphQL types. So I'm assuming not many people are familiar with Python here, but um, if you want to convert this uh, to, to Python, we can easily do it in uh, just a few steps. So the first thing we need to do is to basically replace type to class. So we do something like this. So we have you know, something that almost looks like Python. And we also need to remove the curly braces because Python, it's weird and it doesn't use uh, curly braces to define code blocks. So we do that and now we have something that's almost valid Python code. So I could run this almost. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is pretty much to change the string type to be str and remove the exclamation mark. Um, str is basically the string type in Python, and we don't need to use exclamation mark because uh, Python every, uh, the types are non nullable by default, like many other languages. And now we have pretty much a uh, fully functional uh, Python code that represents our uh, object type. The next thing that we need to do is to pretty much tell Strawberry to make a GraphQL type out of this. 
And we do that by using the array.type decorator, and that's gonna do quite a few things, but the most important thing is it's gonna read the name of the class, uh, which is gonna use for the object type, and also it's gonna read all the fields and attach them to the object type. And finally, we can also um, use the array of field to attach a resolver to this uh, class. And now we have a fully functional uh, uh, object type that is also able to resolve the fields. And you know, this syntax, I feel like it's very similar to, to the SDL. It's very easy to translate between SDL and Python because you know, we are, are using the feature of the language to be able to define uh, GraphQL types. But we also have all the power of Python at our disposal, so we can do a lot of things with this. So let's talk about that power. Let, let's talk about why we should do code first. And the way I wanted to show you this is by actually implementing something using Survey. So, Let's assume that we're gonna build a new product, something pretty basic, but uh, that might be useful to, to understand how this works. So we have a schema like this that has a author, a book, and a query that allows you to fetch a single book by ID. And we've seen how we can pretty much convert this to Python in you know, just a few changes. Um, and so now we have um, um, the same schema pretty much uh, written in Python with one tiny difference, and that difference is the fact that we have a book field on the query, but it doesn't um, specify that it, it, it wants the ID. Um, and this is because in Sobray, to define arguments on field, you need to use Python functions, because at the end of the day, this is what you're gonna call. Um, and so we can change our code to be like this. And so now we have a uh, method on this class, which has the name uh, book, and um, basically, so the survey of field decorator is going to read this uh, uh, method, it's going to read the name, it's going to read the arguments, like I did in this case, and the return type, and it's going to create a GraphQL field automatically for you. And then we also have the implementation all in the same place. Um, in this case, we're just returning our coded book, but you can imagine this going through database and fetching some proper data. And this is the kind of first benefit that popped into my mind, uh, which is basically the fact that we have uh, everything in one single source, so we don't have to go and touch multiple files. For example, if I wanna change uh, a graphical type, if I wanna add a new field to the book type, I don't have to go uh, to the STL and then go to the resolver file to, to do all of that. And the next benefit is kind of related to that, and it's the fact that we are pretty much being able to reuse the definition of the book both for the schema, but also for uh, our code. So you can see here inside the method for book, we are using the book type, the book class. And you know this means, again, we don't have to go back between multiple files. For example, if I wanna see the shape of the, uh, of the book that I need to return in my resolver, but also you get nice things like auto completion for, for, for our fields and also being able to come and click on the book and see the definition and if you wanna do changes and you don't need to do, to install any third party tools for something like that. And, and then the next benefit is, uh, it's about making sure that your code is fully type checked. So you can see here, there's actually an error. And we, in, in Python, type ins are basically hints. It's not really doing anything around time. Python is actually ignoring them uh, in a way. Um, and so, you know, if you try to run this code, it's gonna run, it's probably gonna fail because there is an issue but it's not gonna fail because the types are wrong. Um, but the fact that we have type ins in Python, uh, that allows us to use tools like MyPy to actually type check our code, pretty much like you would do with TSC in TypeScript. Um, and so if we run MyPy on our schema, we're gonna see that there is this error, which is basically saying that we're passing a string instead of an author instance. Uh, and as you can see, the author uh, field is actually uh, requiring an author instance, but we are passing a string. And we can fix that by uh, just changing that uh, to returning an instance. And so now we have a fully functional type safe API and we can keep extending without having to worry about uh, any error related to you know, type safety. Um, and by using the language uh, types, we get type checking pretty much for free without having to run any, running any code gen like you would do maybe with, um, with schema first. And I think this is pretty valuable because it reduces the amounts of work that you need to do to, to make sure that your API is fully type checked. Um, and there is also less tool that you need to install in your code base. So now we have a good base for extending our API. Let's actually do that. Let's actually add a new, more, uh, new, new type for the reviews. So 
here we have a simple type for a review, which we would like to use in our books. And, you know, before being able to use this, we need to decide where to put this type. And, you know, we could write everything in one fives like you would do in, uh, in schema first, but that's not gonna scale well, you know, because uh, we want to be able to mod modularize our code base. And instead we can leverage features of Python to be able to just have different module for uh, different concerns. So for example, we can write this, uh, um, this type here inside the reuse.py file and then we can import it in, um, in our books uh, schema, uh, which looks pretty much like this. Um, so from reviews, import preview, and then we're using it directly on the book type. So we don't need to use third party tools for you know, being able to split our scheme into multiple files, uh, which is, again, it's an additional benefit of just being able to use a language for, um, for writing our schema. Okay, so the next benefit is, um, is I think it's gonna be quite nice. So let's say that we wanna add the field to fetch many, many books at once. So for example, something like this in SDL. So we have a books field to accept a page and then returns a book page. Um, and the book page looks pretty much like this, has a total, uh, uh, total items and then a list of items. And arguably you would do use maybe Relay Pagensha for this, but I wanted to keep it simple for, for this talk. So we see now we can convert this type to Python and you know we could directly create a book page class. Um, but if you think about this is a type that's pretty much gonna be reused every time we do a pagination, or at least the shape of this type is gonna be reused. So in Python supports generic types, so we could use something like that instead. And in the context of strawberry, a generic type is pretty much like a template type. It's a type that you can re reuse with uh, multiple times in your code base. So uh, generic type in strawberry looks pretty much like this. So in this case, we are defining the similar uh, page type where it has a parameter T, and then we are reusing the parameter T inside the list. And that T is pretty much like a placeholder uh, that's gonna be replaced with the actual type that you're gonna use later. So if we put this into our schema, then we are able to use it in our books field here. And, you know, nothing too crazy here. So we're doing another uh, method which one with our one argument, but the important thing is here in the in the return type where we're using page of book. And so so probably when when sees generic types and it sees that you're passing a type, it's gonna create a new additional GraphQL type automatically for you. So there's gonna be a book page created automatically for uh, in your schema. And then you can also do this for authors, for example. And you can imagine if you have a lot of these kind of things, you can keep reusing this type. Um, and that means that you pretty much, you can use the same pattern without having to duplicate code in your code base, which I think is quite nice. And I'm actually pretty proud of this feature. It took quite a while to figure out all the use cases, uh, well, the edge cases, like it works with unions, it works with multiple types and also nested things. So it works really well, for example, if you're, if you're doing um, relay pagination. So let's do a quick recap of this, uh, the benefits that we've seen so far. So as I mentioned, you have one single source of truth, so you have just the code to be able to uh, define your schema. And then you can do end-to-end -end type checking without having to install an additional tool. And it's very easy to modularize and scale our code base. This is a problem that's already solved in Python and you don't have to think about, about it. And again, by using generic types and also potentially also creating your custom function, you can reuse common patterns easily in uh, your GraphQL schema. So now we have a great foundation for you know, growing our API and maybe our team is also growing. So we, we hire more developers and we wanna make sure that the API is consistent with uh, our style guide, our internal style guide. And unfortunately, Strawberry doesn't provide a linting tool, but instead we can use uh, one of the GraphQL linters, for example, GraphOS, which provides a feature to pretty much lint your schema against a set of rules, uh, like for example here, uh, there is a enum, there's a suffix called enum, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, pretty much with GraphOS, you send the schema and then that's gonna validate that. But as I mentioned, GraphOS needs a schema file, but we don't have that because we have Python code. Um, but luckily, pretty much every single um, uh, code first library has a way to export the schema to a file, and Strawberry is no, no exception, it has the export schema functionality that you can use pretty much like this. So you do Strawberry export schema, passing the path to the schema and redirecting that to a file. And then you use Rover, which is the command line for GraphOS, which allows you to run checks on the, um, 
on your schema. So actually made a quick demo of this because I think it's quite interesting to see how it works in the context of uh, GitHub Actions. So you should be able to see this here. So uh, I made a tiny repo here which, um, um, which implements Survey and I've done a request where I'm I've done, I've done something a bit silly, which is just changing the type name of the user to be user type, which is something, again, should not do. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and then when I go and take a look at the checks, what I'm doing here um, is pretty much what I said. I'm installing all the dependencies for Python, so I'm able to run um, my scheme export. So I'm running this command here, uh, just exporting the schema to a file. Then I'm installing Rover, and then I'm running schema check here using Grover. Uh, this is a bit. Okay. Uh, now there is quite a few things that um, that uh, Grover check is doing. It's actually checking if my schema does invalidate any of the operation that I have already done. But yeah, the, the things that's important for us is this error here, um, because again we have a user type, and we don't want name to have to end with type pretty much. And I can also take a look at this inside Apollo Studio, which has um, a nicer interface for kind of. Uh, checking all these things. So we can see here that there's one violation for the type suffix, and this is the type. And also, there is also other violation because I didn't write the descriptions. Okay, so. Cool, so, you know, we've seen by being able to export the schema, we are pretty much um, uh, able to use any GraphQL tool that exists in separation. So we don't have to worry about the fact that we're using Python. We can just use, you know, things like GraphQL code gen, for example, if you want to generate code for our front end. And this also works for, for, for federation. And I'm assuming most people are familiar here, but just in case there's someone watching that doesn't know what federation is, federation is pretty much a technology that allows you to combine multiple GraphQL APIs into one by creating a single super graph. So for example, we we could split our API into multiple ser services, like for example, the book subgraph and the review subgraph, uh, so that we can have you know individual team working on the individual concern. And we could end up with a schema that looks like this, or two schemas that look like this. So they're not different than what we've seen before, but there's a couple of main changes. The first one is that we are using a key directive on the book type, uh, which pretty much mean, makes this book an entity, which means that Basically, any subgraph can contribute additional fields to this book type. And then um, the next thing that, that's different is that we have this book type we also have inside the view service. And this allows us to contribute the reviews field to, to the book without having you know, to go and fetch it manually from, um, from the book service. Um, and then when I run uh, Polar Federation using a Polar Router, this is gonna combine all this into one thing single super graph, which can then query like this. So here, for example, I'm fetching the book by ID, and then I'm also fetching the reviews for, for that book. And I don't have to worry about the fact that this data is coming from uh, multiple services. It all just works. So, uh, and it's pretty cool. Um, the problem is that Apollo Federation uses uh, schema directives. And schema directives are something that you pretty much use in schema first development. It's, um, or at least so I thought at the beginning. So when, when, when I was implementing Federation in, in Survey, I, the first implementation was a bit weird. I was doing some random things, but uh, when I was implementing version two, I really kind of stopped and think about what does it mean to have schema directives in, in, um, in GraphQL? And if you take a look at this, this is how the key directive is defined. And if you think about it, it's not that different from, from an object type. It's actually a definition of something. And so for, for Survey, we actually decided to create um, uh, to add support for actually creating schema directives from Python code. So something like this. So here, this is the equivalent of uh, the key directive that I've seen before. So pretty much similar to the object type, you have a decorator that allows you to uh, specify all the information for the directive plus the, the fields that you wanna be able to pass to this directive. And then survey.type also accept a directives argument where you can pass a list of directives. And then the last thing we needed to do is to basically tell the schema printer that we have to print all this uh, custom directive. Because this was something that wasn't really supported in the Python implementation. So we have a custom implementation that goes on every type, checks if there is directives, and then we print them when exporting the schema. 
And that means that you can use federation, but you can also use any additional tool that support, the, well, that leverage the directives. But to be fair, especially if you're familiar with somebody, um, I wasn't really happy with the syntax. It's, it's quite verbose and, you know, I really like federation. I wanted to be, to make it extremely use it to, extremely easy to use in Strawberry. So I decided to create a specialized version of Strawberry.type, uh, which looks like this. Um, so there is Strawberry.federation.type that knows about all the features of federation and allows you to pretty much make it, um, make it faster to write federation types. And also, you know, for example, if using federation fields, you can easily do that with, with just code. Um, and I think this makes for a much better developer experience. We can also add, for, for example, additional functionalities, which we don't have yet, for example, to, we could validate the IDs here because we know that these keys should be, um, should be available on, on, the, on this type. So, you know, this is pretty much the last benefit for me of Codeverse. It's just that it makes so much, um, so much easier to write schema and it makes your uh, developer experience much better. So hopefully by now I've convinced you that, you know, code first is the best approach to go, but I also wanted to give you some advice on things you should not do with, with code first. Um, you know, with great power comes a great responsibility. It's really easy to abuse code, uh, especially with, you know, uh, dynamic languages like Python. And Strawberry actually has features that allow you to create fully dynamic schemas. You can, you know, uh, I've, Actually, today I was talking with some people that were generating schema based on a query. So they would generate schema runtime using a using Strawberry, which uh, for their use case worked well, but it's something that, again, um, I would not advise doing because it makes your schema pretty much unpredictable. And also on top of that, I would say don't automate type generation. This is, again, another feature that we have. For example, we support SQL Alchemy and Django. We are able to create GraphQL types from them. Um, and that, you know, it's a really cool feature, but uh, it doesn't really scale well in future because, you know, GraphQL gives you a lot of power to make your uh, API extremely developer friendly and automated type generation kind of defeats that, unfortunately. And, you know, as Mark was mentioning in his keynote, I think we should strive to design our schema before actually implementing that. So, you know, schema first, it's kind of approach of that makes sense, but let's say design first is probably the right approach for GraphQL. Even if you're doing, you know, code first or schema first, you should really think about the API that you wanna uh, expose to your to your clients. And just for this talk, actually, I was uh, wondering if we could make it easier to to create uh, um, Python-based uh, uh, GraphQL APIs using Strawberry. And you know, when when you think about you know, schema, the schema language is actually a really good way to, to talk with people. Like, for example, if you're working with your teammates, you probably w wouldn't really send Python code around to say, oh, let's discuss how the API should look. You probably use the SDL because it's pretty much understood by everyone. And so I built a tiny tool for Strawberry to allow you to convert the schema file to, to Python. And it works pretty much like this, but maybe I'll uh, share a quick demo of that. <coughs> um, So here I have a um, schema.graphql file, which is quite extensive. Um, I'm assuming you probably wouldn't use this on this big of a, um, of a schema file. Because um, I mean, there's a lot of things and you know, you wouldn't maybe design all of this at once. Um, but uh, yeah, you can pretty much use schema code gen, passing the schema file and then redirecting that, that to a uh, Python file. And then I'm running block, which is like pretty for Python, so that it look, looks a bit nicer. Um, and now we can see pretty much the same schema but written in Python, uh, which is which is quite nice. Um, thank you. Um, and hopefully this can be implemented by you know even potentially even GraphQL code. I know GraphQL code gen is mostly for clients, but it could be even implemented uh, for uh, other languages. And, and speaking of other languages, um, I know, you know, I am pretty much a Python fanboy at this point. I know there's a lot of people that, you know, don't like it or maybe they want to use other languages. And so I did a bit of research and I collected some of the, uh, it's probably not all of them, but some of the libraries they have a similar approach um, than Strawberry. So there is TypeGraphQL and Guts for TypeScript. There is GraphQL Ruby, 
which I think is quite powerful as well. And then there's async GraphQL and GraphQL Kotlin. And assuming there is also many other for uh, other languages, but I didn't have time to find all of them. So hopefully, you know, even if you use a different language, you, you still are able to leverage a similar approach uh, with your language. So that brings me to a summary. So I think, you know, code first um, brings the best developer experience. Obviously, this is really kind of a personal um, opinion, but I think hopefully, you know, you agree by now. Um, it's really easy to scale, you, you know, building GraphQL APIs in Python because we can, you know, modularize your code and you can reuse, uh, you know, generic types, for example, to, you know, to reuse the common patterns that you have, like pagination and things like that. Um, then you can use um, scheme export to use any additional GraphQL tool that you want to use. But, you know, don't abuse code. Think about the feature first that you want to implement. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, thanks, everyone. I left some links here, so if you want to, you know, follow me, if you want to check out Strawberry, uh, if you want to chat about Apollo, GraphOS, I'm going to be on Discord pretty much every day except on the weekends. Um, but, yeah, thank you. I'm happy to take any questions even now or later on. I have a flight pretty soon, so uh, if you don't see me, it's not because I'm scared. It's, uh, I need to run. Uh, yeah, thanks again.